our sun and all the main sequence stars out there are powered by fusion processes in their core. It's how you go from, say, two protons smashed together into you know, a heavier nuclei, heavier material that is then spitting out energy. In this case here, we're seeing neutrinos and the positron or anti-electron flying out. So what we're going to try and do in this video is go through all the, all the processes in this main chain, this proton-proton chain. Our sun alone has, has been burning constantly for about 4.6 billion years. That, that source of energy is what we'll describe as hydrogen burning, where you take a bunch of hydrogen atoms, smash them together, and get helium out, proton, proton, neutron, neutron, and energy. This energy here, that's what we consume. We only consume a fraction of what the sun radiates away, but it is enough to power us along with the sun, keeping it stable. So one thing we'll emphasize here is that all the main sequence stars all stars that fall in what we call the main sequence are powered by this process. Since we're going from hydrogen to helium, I think it's important to build up our familiarities a bit more. So his, this would be a stereotypical example of information you'd see in a periodic table. Right? The top information, that's the atomic number. Basically, how many protons are in that element followed by the chemical symbol to help us identify and name these things. And this next number, this is going to be important for us, the atomic weights. How much does this thing, do these things weigh in an atomic unit? So if we are burning hydrogen into helium, well, very straightforward question, how many hydrogen atoms does it take to make one helium atom? Go ahead and pause, think about it. So it's going to take straight up four hydrogen atoms. We need four hydrogen atoms to make one helium atom. This last option here, that's to try and throw you guys off, try and get you think. Think back to the pictures that we've seen before in previous videos of a two protons smashing together and one of them transforming into a neutron. Similar principle here. So let's start to add things up. If it takes four protons, four hydrogen atoms, to make one helium atom, hey, we know their weights. Let's just add this up. The atomic weight of one helium atom is 4.0026 atomic units, whereas the weight of four hydrogen atoms is 4.032. There's a discrepancy. There's a difference of 0 0.0294 atomic units. This discrepancy, this difference, four hydrogen atoms weighs just slightly more than one helium atom. And that difference, that discrepancy, that's the energy that we get to consume today. So I'm going to rephrase that in another way. I'm going to say that the mass of four hydrogen nuclei is 1.007 times greater than one helium nucleus. We've all heard this phrase before. This is basically in the public conscious now. This idea of that energy is equal to mc squared. What does that mean? What's the consequence of this? Well, if four hydrogen atoms is 1.007 times heavier than one helium, that 007 mass, mc squared, that's excess energy. When we say mass, we're saying mass is just another form of energy, just like the kinetic energy when we talk about meteorites crashing into places or when we talk about gravitational energy when you're jumping off a rooftop or a plane. All right? These are all just different forms of energy. So a discrepancy in mass means that that is energy that gets to power us. When fusion processes happen in the sun, this discrepancy will get radiated away in terms of photons, electrons, and neutrinos. And all this is happening in the core of the sun, which is around 15 million Kelvin. That's how hot we need to start getting towards for fusion processes to occur. And for our sun, its primary, 
process is called a proton proton chain. How do I go from four protons to one helium? We'll get to that briefly, but I want to ask ourselves a simple question of how long will the sun live? If the sun is constantly consuming a bunch of hydrogen atoms, fusing them together and spitting out helium and some free energy, this can't last forever. Think about driving down the highway. You're eventually going to run out of gas and have to refill. Stars don't have that option. They don't get to refill. Ooh, what's the lifespan of the sun? How long is it going to last? Straightforward calculation. How much energy does the sun have? What's the consumption rate? How quickly it's consuming that? So the rate it's consuming times however long it's going to live is equal to the total energy of the sun. So let's just break these things down turn by turn. Let's go with the total energy. How much energy is in the sun? Well, it comes from the sun's mass, right? It's the sun's mass that's being compressed to fuel the fusion processes. So the sun has a mass of 1.989 10 to the 30th kilograms. But think back to our charts before. It's only the material deep in the core that actually gets to be fused. Anything outside of the core will be in the radiative or the convective zones. They're not fusible. That mass isn't being burned up. So it turns out, while the sun may weigh, weigh up to 10 to 30th kilograms, the amount of fuel, the amount of the sun's mass that will be burned in these proton-proton chains is only about 10% or 0.1 the sun's mass. So recall that, that when fusing four hydrogen atoms into helium, there's that 007 discrepancy in mass. So the total energy of the sun is just going to be 0 0.007, the discrepancy from four hydrogens to one helium, times the amount of fuel on the sun, the 10% of the sun's mass that will actually be fusible, into E equals mc squared, speed of light squared. So the sun's total energy is 1.2 times 10 to the 44th joules. So we're going to table this equation, this, this value on the side now, because we're going to use it later when calculating the lifespan of the sun. Now that we have the total energy of the sun, let's figure out what we mean by this consumption rate. How quickly you're eating up fuel. Think of this as when you're driving down the highway, are you coasting here in the United States, are you coasting at 55 miles per hour? Or are you slamming on the accelerator and trying to go as quickly as you can? You run out of gas a lot faster. So the rate that you're burning up fuel, the rate that you're consuming energy, that's what we mean. And for the sun, we just say, hey, it's how much energy the sun is spitting out every second. We've defined this quantity before. It's the luminosity. The luminosity is how much energy per second a star is radiating away. So we look at our sun. We can easily measure this, and we say that the luminosity of the sun is about 4 times 10 to 26 joules per second. I want to give this number some context. So, we'll put it this way. Every second, the sun radiates this much energy away. Every second. Every second, this much energy is just being blown away from the sun. So... Did some research, and we can say that in 2016, humanity, civilization, we consumed in the entire length of that year about 6 times 10 to the 20th joules of energy. At that rate, if we keep consuming energy at this rate of 6 times 10 to the 20th joules of energy, it will take us about 660,000 years to use the same amount of energy that the sun radiates every second. It will take all of humanity working as hard as we can, as inefficient as we can, consuming as much energy, almost 700,000 years to match what the sun spits out in a second, every second, for billions of years. So 
We know how much energy the sun has. It's just the amount of hydrogen in its core that can be fused. We know the rate that the sun is consuming, how much it's spitting out energy. So we're left with how long is the sun going to live? What's its lifespan? Well, just rearrange the equation. It'll be the total energy divided by the consumption rate. So go back to previous slides, pull these numbers together, and the sun has total energy of 1.2, 10 to 44 joules. It's consuming them at 4 times 10 to 26 joules a second. And we'll find that the sun will have a lifespan of 3 times 10 to the 17th seconds. Converting those units into something or uh, a bit easier to comprehend, I suppose. The sun's total life will be about 10 billion years. That's it. At this rate, the sun keeps consuming, consuming material. The sun will run out. It will cease fusing in about 10 billion years. What we know is that our sun is currently about halfway there. 4.6 billion years old.